John chapter 12, verse 42. <clears throat> Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, you know that the Pharisees, they had different levels of rulers in the synagogue. This may include some of the civil rulers. But these were men in, in some position. It says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. They believed the Lord Jesus was the Christ. They believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Did not publicly confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. And here's why. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Our subject is seek honor from God. Seek honor from God. And if I had a subtitle, it would be not men. Seek honor from God, not men. Let me lay out a scenario here that you and I have all encountered to some degree or another. And I want this to be very plain the Pharisees and the scribes are sitting around the backyard talking. There's some chief rulers sitting around with them. There's some brethren scattered about with them. Similar to what we would do at a conference or, you know, when we get together, what have you. And one of the Pharisees asked, or one of the, one of the chief rulers one of these that believed he was the Christ. They asked him, have y'all heard about this new preacher named Jesus? He, he was, this chief ruler obviously was a southern boy. Have y'all heard about this preacher named Jesus? And one of the chief ruler, rulers said, I heard that he healed a lame man. No one ever healed, a, healed men like this man's doing. And one of the Pharisees objected. He said, yeah, but he broke the Sabbath. When he did it, he broke the Sabbath day. Another chief ruler said, well, I heard he received sinners. That's what I've been hearing he received sinners. One of the Pharisees objected. He said, yeah, but when he's at those dinners, he likes to drink wine he likes to eat too much. Somebody said, I heard him say he's one with God. I heard him say he's one with God. I heard it. No man ever spake like this man. I heard him say he's one with God. And one of the Pharisees objected and he said, he was born of fornication. Another said, but he casts out evil spirits from men. We, we heard about this demoniac at Gadara. He cast evil spirits out of this man. A Pharisee objected and said, he only does that by the devil. That's how he does that, by the devil. And then the Pharisees doubled down. And they said, we've already met about this man. And we've, we've discussed this man. And we've decided if anybody believes on this man, we're casting him out of the synagogue. Our text says many of the chief rulers believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You see, they believed on him. They believed on him, it says. But it was not true God-given faith. They believed him to be the Christ, but they wanted to stay in favor with their mentors. They wanted to stay in favor with the Pharisees. They wanted to hear the Pharisees commend them as being faithful and praise them for being faithful. And they didn't want to lose that. On one occasion, Christ said to them in John 5, 41, He said, I receive not honor from men. 
He said, How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? You know, we talk to our children about peer pressure. And when we hear that word peer pressure, we usually think about children coming under the pressure from other, you know, their peers. But brethren, this is a problem that grown folks have a lot of problem with, even believers. Here's what I want you to remember. This is what I want you to get. Peer pressure that makes a man deny Christ is sin that only God can save a man from. And likewise, peer pressure that makes a man deny true brethren, witnesses who Christ has sent, is sin that only God can save us from. Only God can. We all like to have favor of our mentors, those brethren that taught us, were mentors in, in the church, and, and our brethren. We like to have favor from our, of our family and our friends. We don't want to unnecessarily offend anybody. But when it makes a man refuse to confess Christ publicly, when that, when that desire to have the honor and the commendation and the praise of men, when that desire makes a man refuse to confess Christ publicly, or when it makes a man not defend brethren and stand between the accuser and the brethren, one for whom Christ died, when it makes makes a man shun a brother for whom Christ died because you don't want to lose favor because this other brother doesn't like that brother. Be very careful about stuff like that, brethren. We do not want to be like those who love the praise of men more than the praise of God. We do not want to be those who receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God alone. Turn over to Matthew 10. I want you to hear what the Lord Jesus said when he sent his apostles out to preach. This is uh, f quite a few verses here, but uh, this, this sums everything up I'm trying to say in this introduction. Look at Matthew 10, verse 27. He said, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach you upon the housetops. In other words, don't you be, don't you be ashamed to confess me. Scripture says when he's giving you faith, you won't be ashamed to believe on him and to confess him before men. He says, And do this, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I, I came not to send peace but a sword. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that would rather have the honor of those family than the honor that comes from God, he says, is not worthy of me. There's going to be some suffering involved in that. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life, tries to save his life from this suffering, shall lose it. And who th he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Now listen, this is concerning brethren. All that he saves are his witnesses. And it's not just his preacher. It's all you and me and everybody he saves are his witnesses. And he says, he that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet, the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward. 
And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give a, to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Be very careful, brethren, speaking negatively of brethren. Be careful of not standing between the accuser and defending brethren. All our brethren are his witnesses, just like his preacher is. And to persecute one Christ has sent, one who is his witness, that's to hate Christ, and it's to hate Christ is to hate the Father. He said in John 15, 20, Remember the word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they've persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they've kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And he said this, He that hateth me hateth my Father also. Only God, only God can save us from peer pressure and make us willing to confess Christ publicly and stand with Christ. And only Christ can make us stand with brethren and defend brethren, come what may. No matter who it is that rejects them or how they reject them, to reject them. Only Christ can do that. Now I want to show you how he does this and what he does what he does through this, how he honors his people. Does God honor his people? Does God commend his people? Does God praise his people? He certainly does. That's what the scripture says. Now let's begin where this begins in us. It begins in the new birth. Turn with me to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 and here's why he honors his saints, because we're his workmanship. He did all the work. That's why he honors those that he's created anew. Look here in Romans 2.28. He says, He is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now, when the Lord gives you faith, when he regenerates his child, gives you life, gives you faith, we praise God. We give God all the glory because, because spiritual life and faith and repentance and every good work and every fruit is all of God. Every good and every perfect gift coming down from the Father of lights. It comes down from God with whom is no no variableness of turning, no shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. He did that. So we give him all the praise and glory. But right here in Romans 2, when it speaks of the praise of God, he's talking about God's praise toward his people. That's what it's talking about. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 10. The reason God praises his child and commends his child and approves of his child is because God did all the work. God, we're his workmanship. Look here, and, uh, and it's a heart work. It's inward. It's in the heart. It's in spirit. Look here in 2 Corinthians 10, 7. There were men who were turning the Corinthians against the Apostle Paul. Paul dealt with this a whole lot. And he said in 2 Corinthians 10, 7, I, I can't read it all, but I just want to give you some parts of it. You go home and read it. He said in verse 7, Do you look on things after the outward appearance? That's what they were doing to Paul. Look at verse 10. They said, For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Verse 12. He said those, in verse 12, he said, Those who measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves among themselves are not wise. You think about it, brethren. One worm commending another worm because he's outwardly appears better than other worms. <laughs> That's not very wise, is it? Just because of some one worm does outwardly, and you commend and praise, or worse, even the one worm commending himself by comparing himself to other worms. Look at verse 17. He said, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. That word commendeth means whom the Lord approves. 
Remember how the Lord Jesus commended Nathanael? Nathanael was under the fig tree and nobody saw him, but the Lord saw him and the Lord saw his heart. And he was actually praying from in the new spirit and praying it with faith and praying and worshiping God in his heart under that tree. And when he started walking up, the Lord said, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. You remember how the Lord commended Mary and how he defended her. He stood between her and Judas when Judas when Judas criticized her for coming and pouring out that costly ointment and anointing the Lord's body for burial. Judas, he, he criticized her for that. The Lord didn't. The Lord defended her and commended her and he presented her faultless before every one of them standing there in that room that day. And that's what the Lord's going to do for all his people in the end. It's exactly, he's going to defend, commend, and present us faultless in his righteousness alone. Paul said, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man, every true Jew, every true saint of God have praise of God. God will praise all his people in that day. Why is that? Because everything we are is by Christ and it's in Christ and, and Christ gets all the glory and God is pleased with his son and so he commends his people and accepts his people and, and approves of his people and praises his people because of what Christ has done. We're his workmanship. Now here's, here's the thing that makes you, here's who you commend. Here's who we're to commend. They were criticizing Paul. Paul told those Corinthians. He preached the gospel to them. He, in 2 Corinthians, he, he preached the gospel all the way to them. He said, whatever I'm suffering, whatever we're suffering in this world now, it's so that we can comfort you with the same comfort where we were comforted when we're afflicted. And that comfort is Christ the Lord. He told them, he said, I don't need letters of commendation from you. I don't need you or my epistle written with, not, with, not with, with fleshly pen and ink. You're written with the spirit of the living God in the heart. He said, God has called you out from that old covenant and all its glory and brought you under the everlasting covenant of grace with all its glory. He said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and out of us. And he said, in all these afflictions, when we're cast down, it's the Lord making our old man to die and it's the Lord renewing our new man and he's making us look at things that are not seen because those are the eternal real things. And then he said this, he said, we're not commending ourselves again to you. He said, I'm telling you this to give you something to glory on our behalf with. He's saying, I'm preaching the gospel to you so you can use what I'm preaching to you to defend us and speak to our accusers that, that we are truly called of God and saved of God and sent of God and preach Christ and declare how we've preached Christ. He said, we commend not ourselves again to you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. See, that's something to commend your brethren for. Those that believe on Christ and speak of Christ and declare Christ and give Christ all the glory and give man no glory. And those, those are the ones truly called and saved and who are true witnesses of Christ. Those are, that's a reason to commend somebody. That's a reason to defend somebody. That's one Christ died for. That's what Paul said. He said, you defend us to those men who are glorying in appearance and not in heart. You see, what I'm trying to show you is this. God's not looking on the outward appearance. God's looking on the heart. He commends us because the heart in his child is the heart he created in circumcision of the spirit. He told, he told Samuel when he went to get David, he said, look not on his countenance. Don't look on his outward countenance. He said, don't look on the height of his stature. Well, don't you want a handsome king? Don't you want a king that stands head... Shoulders above everybody? God said, don't look on it. He said, I refuse that man. He said, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. When a man's been born again, circumcised in the heart, born of the incorruptible seed, 
This is what Peter said. He said, that's the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible. That's why Paul, the Lord said to Nathaniel, here's an Israelite deed in whom is no guile. That was not of Nathaniel. He didn't say it because of something Nathaniel did. He said that because Christ created a new heart in him that is holy, and in that new man, he was incorruptible. He was born of the incorruptible seed, and in him was no guile. And so... The hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. God's looking on the heart. Christ said to the Pharisees, he said, you are they which justify yourselves before men. You know, about 99% of what goes on in religion is to be seen of men. About 99% of it. To receive praise of men and honor from men and accommodation to men. It don't matter what I think about you. That's not going to help you before God. It don't matter what you think about me. We can quit trying to impress one another. That's not what's going to help us before God. He told the Pharisees, you're they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. One reason it's abomination in the sight of God is because judging by outward appearance makes men self-righteous and makes men despise others. That's one reason it's abomination of God. Remember the Lord's parable? Who was he saying it to? That, that, that Pharisee and that publican, that Pharisee represented the people he was preaching to that day. It says, he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. That's what judging by the appearance always results in. Self-righteousness and despising others. It results in men saying, stand over there, come not near me, I'm holier than thou. That's the only place in scripture where one sinner is spoken of as being holier than another sinner. That's the only place. There is no relative holiness among men. It's not that some are, have grown and they're more holy than these other folks. It's never spoken of that way anywhere in Scripture but one place in Isaiah 65, 5, and they say, Stand by thyself, come not near me, for I'm holier than thou. And God said, These are a smoke in my nose and a fire that burns all day. He said, It's like a stinking trash dump to me. A smoking fire and a trash dump. True religion is spiritual. True religion is in the new spirit created of God the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus said the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, true worshipers, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is why the Lord Jesus told the Pharisee, he said, you judge after the flesh. He said, I judge no man after the flesh. And he said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Judge spiritual judgment. And holy God, that's how he judges. He approves, he commends, he praises those. He's given a new heart because we're his workmanship and God looks on the heart. Remember that about your brethren. Remember that about it. No matter what happens outwardly, remember that about your brethren. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in, in them. That's why God praises his people and commends his people, accepts his people, and honors his people. He did the work. Now look secondly. We honor the Father one way through faith in His Son. God honors those who honor Him. And the only way you're going to honor the Father is through faith in His Son. That's the only way. Publicly confessing Him, standing with brethren who confess Him, all the way to the end. Listen, only Christ honored the Father in perfection. Only Christ did. He's the only one who did. That's the only way you honor him is in perfection. He's the only one who honored him. He did it for the elect who God chose to save and who God trusted to him to save. Listen, 
Verse Isaiah 42, 21 says, The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. That's what Christ did, and he did it for his people. He made the law honorable. In doing so, he made us honorable before the law. Listen, the works of the Lord are great. They're sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. Now, so the way that we honor the Father, God will he'll honor his child, he accepts his child, he'll praise his child. There's only one way he'll do that. That's for you to honor the Son. And the only way we honor the Son is believing on the Son and confessing him publicly, uniting with his people under his gospel. Look at John 5, 22. John 5, 22. I preach that first message. You see what Christ is doing for us? All those covenant promises we have. And this is what faith believes. We believe on Him. We know He's our provider and our, and our provision. It's John 5.22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which is sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. How can you believe on him that sent Christ? When God gives you faith to believe on Christ, you believe on God who sent Christ because Christ and the Father are one. They're one. And it's through faith in Christ that we honor the Son and we honor the Father. And that's who the Father honors. That's who He honors. God our Father will have all men honor His Son. Listen, He chose, he chose to exalt Christ and give Him all the glory. That's, that's the purpose of salvation. God's purpose in salvation is to show His righteousness, manifest His righteousness. And His righteousness is a person. It's the Lord Jesus. And so... He chose to exalt him in eternity and he chose his people in him and he sent Christ to honor his law to pay the wages of sin which is death on behalf of his people so that we would behold how righteous and holy God is. And you behold that in his son. And when you, he gives you faith to believe on his son and trust his son that he really is your righteousness and your holiness, that's what highly honors the father. Because the Father's honors in His Son and He's pleased with His Son and He delights in His Son and He'll have His people honor His Son. That's the only way you're going to honor His Son, brethren. Faith in Christ honors the Father because it's all of God. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, Of God are you in Christ Jesus. That's of God. Who of God? <laughs> Only way we know who Christ is. Who of God is made unto us? Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. God chose us in Christ and God reveals Christ to us. And he does it so that he that glories, let him glory only in the Lord. That's how you honor the Father. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Now, another way you go honor Christ and thereby honor the Father, and you can only do this through faith, only through faith. This is why he's left us in this body of death. When you fall or when your brethren fall, stand with your fallen brethren and trust your father, fallen brethren to the Lord Jesus Christ. That honors the Son. That, you can only do it through faith that honors Him and trusts Him. When we, when, we, when we come to the fallen brother and rather than break out the whip of the law and condemn them, you come to them and you remind them of what Christ has accomplished for His people. You speak the gospel to them. That honors Christ. Because you know. Why do you do that? Because you know that's the message to which He called you, which He's kept you, which He's renewed you. You know that's the message that blesses you. You know that's the message that strengthens you. You know that's the message He's used to save you out of all your falls. 
And so having the same way we receive this mercy is the same way we faint not. And so we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. We don't go using other means and other methods. We go speaking the gospel of Christ. That honors him. And then we pray to Christ for them because we know he's the only one that can make the word effectual. That honors Christ, and thus that honors the Father. And then we wait on Christ to make them stand. We don't, we don't do this and come to this point and decide, well, maybe, maybe the Lord needs us to help him out to produce a child like Abraham and Sarah did. No, we wait on the Lord and trust he's going to produce this fruit in, the child, in his child. And then when he's done it, and as he's doing it, we're merciful, and we forgive one another for Christ's sake, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven us. Paul said, "You, if a, if a brother's overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore one another in a spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ." For if a man think himself something when he's nothing, he deceives himself, but let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Now here's the opposite of that. Right after that, he said, As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, in the outward appearance, he said, They constrain you to be circumcised. They constrain the brother that's fallen to do this, that, or the other. And he said, lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh, that they may get praise from men for what they made you do. They want the glory and honor of men and the praise of men. Now that's just the opposite of what the Lord's telling you and me to do. If you want to honor the Son, when your brother falls, you trust Christ. Trust your brother to Christ. And trust Christ to make him stand. If we begin to attempt to force others into obedience, we seek the glory that belongs to Christ. That's not faith in Christ. And doing so, we don't honor the Son, and we don't honor the Father. We're trying to seek the praise that comes from men every time. Every time. How can you believe, he said, and seek honor from men and not that honor that comes from God only? You're only going to receive that honor trusting Christ only. Now thirdly, those who honor the Son through faith, God honors. He does. God approves. God even praises. It's because God honors, approves, and praises His Son. And if you do it, <laughs> His Son worked it. And you see what I'm saying? This is all so, it's all so inter, inter, interwoven. If, when you trust the Son, God will honor you, He approves of you, and He praises you. It's because He honors and commends and approves and praises His Son, and the only reason you did what you did is by His Son. He's praising His Son. And you're getting in on it. <laughs> Look, in 1 Samuel 2.30, he said, The Lord God of Israel saith, Them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Christ honors those. Christ himself honors those that believe on him. How does he do that? He said, Those who confess me before men, I'll confess before my Father. I'll stand before my Father on their behalf. Why does he do that? Here's why. Listen. Here's why he honors those that trust him. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he's not ashamed to call us brethren. When he said, when I've sanctified you in heart and given you faith, you won't be ashamed. You won't be ashamed to confess him before men. And he said, and I'm not ashamed to confess you before my father. Because we're one. We're one. And through faith in Christ, God our Father honors His child. He's not ashamed of us. Listen, Hebrews eleven sixteen 16 says, They desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. You see, 
It's not that you and me did something to be honored of God. It's not that we did something to be praised and approved of God. God did it all for us. He prepared for us a city. He sent His Son. He laid down His life. He gave us faith. He regenerated us and brought us to trust Him. And then God honors you like you did it all. <laughs> That's grace, isn't it? <laughs> Here's the honor that comes from God that He only gives to those that believe on His Son. This is the honor that comes from God. We find it in John 5 there, verse 24. Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So when you're sitting around in the backyard and somebody speaks of a, of a preacher or somebody speaks of a brother, and somebody you admire and trust and, and what have you, if they go speak negatively of them, you just remember this. Seek the honor that comes from God alone. Seek the honor that comes from God alone. Believe on Christ. You sit here today that are young that never confess Christ, or if you're old and you never confess Christ, one major reason you've never confessed Him is you're ashamed to do it before men. You're ashamed to do it before men. He, when he gives you faith and you see you have nothing but him, you won't be ashamed to confess him before men. You will not. You confess him before men. You publicly identify with him. And you that he has called, you continue to confess him before men. You continue to bear witness of him. And you honor him every day in everything that you do. And you do it no matter who the men are that reject you, and no matter how they reject you. Do it no matter who rejects you, no matter how they reject you. And here's something else. You stand with brethren who stand with Christ. You stand with those brethren who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If God the Father is not ashamed to call them brethren, if Christ is not ashamed to call them brethren, don't you be ashamed to call them brethren either. They're complete in Christ. And Christ said, what you do to, to one of mine, you've done to me. That, that holds true positively in a good way. He said, he that gives one of them a drink of cold water, he, I'll, I'm going to bless him for doing it. He not, he's not unfaithful to forget your labor of love, your, your work of love and your labor of love. He's not unfaithful to forget it. He said, even a drink of cold water, I'll, I'll bless him. But on the negative side... He said, "When you, you, what you've done to them in a negative way, you've done it to me. That's how one his people are. So you be very, very, very careful about speaking negatively of somebody Christ laid down his life for and made perfect. You defend those for whom Christ died when the accuser arises. And if it comes to, to you know, brethren that are at odds, you be gracious to both of them. Be merciful to both of them. Don't be merciful and gracious to one at the expense of the other. Be gracious and merciful to both of them. That'll speak louder witness to both of them than to be so to one than the other. Speak that. Be gracious and kind and merciful to both of them. And trust Christ in the whole everything you do. And trust Christ to make your brethren stand. Trust Him to make them stand. Don't be looking on the outward appearance. No matter... You know, we're, we're very bad to think that because somebody failed, that's terrible. And we don't realize that when somebody is doing great and prosperous, they're in a worse condition than that brother that's fallen. But in either case, you trust Christ to make them stand. And you do this because doing so, you're honoring the Son and you're honoring the Father. And that's, listen now, if you do this, if you do this, do it in the spirit of meekness, remembering this, only reason you're doing it is the grace of God. <laughs> That's it. Christ working it in you. You're his workmanship. That's the only reason. And those who honor the Father through faith in his Son, God promised he's going to honor you. 
He's going to honor you. He'll honor you with everlasting life. He'll honor you in and by Christ Jesus. And he's going to honor us by saving his people, all his people, and keeping us united together. This is seek the honor that comes from God, not from men. I pray he does that for us. I pray he'll bless that. All right, Brother uh, Adam and uh, Brother Bill, I want you to pass out the element. We're going to observe the, observe the Lord's table.